Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Vengs, and I'm here to talk about abstractions and software design. Uh, software design is a vast topic by itself, uh, widely discussed and debated for decades, and it may take several hours to talk about it. However, this is a lightning talk, which is less than 10 minutes, right? So the idea is to provide a very quick introduction to abstractions and software design, right? Abstraction is one of the most essential elements of modeling and design, and one of the most important topics in software design. So let's get started, right? So my talk uh, is, uh, you know, has three parts today, right? It's divided in three parts. The first part, I'll introduce you to the topic of abstractions, what they are, how they are used in software design, right? Second, I'll talk about how to craft good abstractions, giving you examples of correct and incorrect abstractions. Third, I'll leave you with some broad guidelines for you know, crafting good abstractions. So that's the, those are the two, three parts of our talk. So let's get started right, with the first part of the introduction. So let me start by defining what abstractions are. You know, are. So abstraction is the art of representing the essential and hiding the unnecessary. Right? So the two words, uh, the two important words are underlined, right? essential and unnecessary. So, so abstraction is really about purposefully suppressing or hiding details of process document in order to bring out more clearly other aspects, details and structure, right? Now, the reason we do this is that it allows us to focus attention on details of greater importance, right? Uh, but why is this concept important for software design, right? So let's start by understanding the most important aspect of software design, right? Now, software design is about reducing complexity, right? Uh, and it is about it is a process of problem solving. So you know you solve a problem by you know breaking it down into smaller problem and reducing complexity, right? So the way we reduce complexity is by decomposition, right? Decomposition is about breaking a large problem into smaller problems. Uh, decomposition helps in multiple ways, right? Decomposition allows reuse, simplifies maintenance, and increases extensibility, right? And most importantly, enables us to reason and understand things, right? And especially about software design, much, much better, right? So let's try, you know, to understand this with a real example, right? So, so I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to design this component. I call this the customer audit component. So I'll give you some context about what that is, right? Uh, so let's say you own a website, right? Where customers can come and, you know, uh, do a bunch of operations, right? Like they can come and they can click on things, they can add, you know, navigate through the website and, and so on and so forth. Your website is a high traffic website, so you get a lot of volume, right? So the problem is you want to record all the actions that the customer perform, uh, right? And, and maybe use it in the future in whatever way you want, right? Uh, so, and, and for this, you you know, you want to build out a component that you can kind of plug in, right? Uh, uh, through the website. So it kind of listens to these events, uh, audit events, audit streams, and, and kind of records that in, in, a, in a appropriate format, right? So that's what is the customer audit component, right? So you want to design this component. So how do you go about doing it, right? So, so uh, there are multiple ways. So I'm going to start with few to give you some ideas, right? Uh, one way is you kind of uh, come up with like three subcomponents, right? Uh, uh, so in this case, I'm talking about AWS uh, offerings, right? Uh, so you have API Gateway, uh, which is uh, where you can actually code your APIs. Uh, then you have DynamoDB, uh, which is a low latency, high throughput, uh, uh, in-memory data store where you can store uh, your, your information, right? And you also have SNS, uh, uh, which, through which you can publish, right? So these are, you know, the standard offerings, right, uh, of AWS. You can, you know, plug them together and kind of, uh, uh, you know, build that out, right? So, so this is one way to kind of, uh, uh, you know, do the design. But, but what you have actually done, right? So you, we had a large component we wanted to build out. It's called the customer audit component, uh, which is obviously a part of the larger, you know, design ecosystem. And what we have done is we have actually broken the large problem into a smaller problems, right? Uh, and, and what we have actually we used abstractions to do that, right? Customer audit component of the large problem, API Gateway, DynamoDB, and SMS are examples of abstractions that you have leveraged. So in this case, uh, you are actually you know, hiding internal details about how DynamoDB is and how it works, right? But instead you're referring to you know the what DynamoDB represents, which is a you know low latency, high throughput uh, uh, you know capabilities, right? Similarly, uh, you know how you, you don't, you're not worried about the internals of SMS, uh, SNS, but you're rather uh, you know about what you, you want to use that. So this is one way to you know uh, uh, you know one way to do decomposition to reduce complexity and use abstractions, right? So what, in summary, abstractions help us reason about software design, right? Design is, design is about 
decomposing a problem into smaller problems at the right level of abstraction. Abstraction was the most essential elements of modeling. So that's, that tells us, uh, you know, uh, gives us a context about abstraction in, in a simple uh, example, right? But, but you know, interestingly, uh, there are multiple ways to break down a problem. For example, in this in this case, the customer audit component could have been broken down, you know, into this way, where I just it's, I have the same three boxes, but now I, I talk about REST APIs. I talk about a low latency, you know, data store that I need, and and I talk about a message publishing system, right? So I've broken it down again into three boxes, but with, with different names, right? Uh, but but I could have also done come up with other abstractions, right? Instead of these three components, I'm going to come up with five or two, right? Uh, or maybe just even one, right? So how do I know if abstractions are right, right? How do I know which ones are good, which ones are bad, right? So, and that's what I'm going to talk about next, right? Defining abstraction is, is a lot more craft uh, uh, that you learn over a period of time, right? So so with that, let's talk about the next section and section, which is crafting abstractions. How do you, you know, uh, you know, figure these, up, you know, build the right abstractions? So with that overview, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to, uh, you know, in this in this section, I'm going to give you some examples of correct and incorrect abstractions. I'm going to, uh, you know, highlight some common flaws uh, that you have to be aware of when crafting abstractions, right? And uh, so the way I'll start is one of the most important aspects of abstraction is naming, which you've seen, right? And so let's start with that. So I'm going to, you know, give you an example, right? So uh, the example that I kind of want to start with is this, where you have a stage, uh, uh, you know, this, this is a, you know, a room uh with chairs so those those you know uh, u-shaped things are chairs so the room has uh, uh you know four rows of uh, you know chairs you know five chairs each so about 20 chairs and it has a stage right so this is the room uh now what i tell you i just show you this picture right uh, and i tell you hey uh, go ahead and name this right so you know, you know uh, create and you know uh, name this thing right so one one name that you may very easily come up with is classroom, right? I mean, it looks like a classroom. It's small in size and you know, stage, so it's it's probably a classroom, right? But now I tell you, uh, you know, you know, great, but that classroom, right, uh, has also a kitchen, right? So th there are chairs now, and there's a stage, there's a kitchen, you know, attached, right? So so now go and name it, right? Uh, this is what I tell you, right? So earlier it was easy, right? There are chairs and stage classroom but now i tell you hey there is a kitchen uh, you know at, at one side and i tell you name it so there are four things that you can do right the first thing you you tell me is hey this is not possible right you know you can't have chairs like this stage and kitchen it's it's not a real world concept right so uh, you know it doesn't exist right so you know yeah it's not a real abstraction uh, that's possible that's the first possibility then i tell you no that, no hey no i really show you a you know a place that that is, uh, you know, uh, there, right? Which which has the, uh, which is which has the kitchen and these chairs on the stage. And now I tell you to name it. Right? So now you have, you, know, you you can do three things, right? The first thing is you you can go to all the way to one extreme of the spectrum and just call it a room, right? Uh, that's one extreme, right? Uh, and and th then you have an advantage because you just called it a room. Tomorrow, if I go and add, let's say, some more furniture, like like a, uh, you know. Uh, like like a table or or study table and so on and so forth. It just works because your abstraction of of calling it a room just works fine. You can you know keep dumping things in. You can put dining table. You can put uh, anything you want and it kind of just works. Right. So that's one extreme end that you kind of go to. The, the other extreme end is you you say great. You know I called it a classroom. Now it is a kitchen, so I'll just call it classroom and kitchen. And tomorrow if there's a table. I'll I'll uh, I'll call it a you know dining room. Classroom plus kitchen plus dining room. So you go to the other extreme, right? So these are two extremes uh, ends of the spectrum. One is you just call it a room, or to the other, uh, you go to the other extreme where you keep concatenating, right? But in reality, right? I, you know, uh, what you want to really think about is there does this represent a new concept, right? A new abstraction that you haven't really thought about, right? Maybe it's a culinary classroom. It's it's a classroom for chefs, right? So they kind of come and uh, present and teach people. And then the students actually do a hands-on exercise uh, in the kitchen to, you know, uh, practice cooking. So maybe it's, it's, it's that new concept, right? So, so uh, you know, what you have actually done. This is very important, right? So what, what the, the point that I want to illustrate is there's a spectrum, right? Abstraction is a spectrum, right? You can go uh, to one end, which is very generic, or you can go to the other end where you're very specific. But you know, you want to kind of strike the right balance in the middle, right? Uh, and in this case, with culinary classroom, what you have actually done is you have thought hard about a new concept. And as a result, established a right level of abstraction. Hopefully, a right level of abstraction, right? So, with that, uh, the first flaw I want to talk about is abstractions are either too specific or too generic. So, you want to keep that in mind. It kind of strike somewhere in the middle, right? It's easy to go to those two extremes, right? 
uh, uh, this is also referred to as uh, weak or strong abstraction, right? This, this concept. It's also called over abstraction or under abstraction, right? Uh, let me also illustrate this a little more with another, you know, common example, right? So all of you know, uh, you know, you've used databases, right? So databases have standard CRUD APIs, right? Create, uh, retrieve, update, and delete. These are standard APIs, right? They are the, you know, any any standard database, of, you know, gives you these uh, these APIs, right? But but if you actually take a step back and, and think about it, the the designers of these APIs, you know, back uh, you know many years back, could have gone to two extremes, right? So one extreme they could have gone is, uh, you know, they could have uh, gone and built a single API for all operations. So you just have an API called database. You kind of pass inputs to it. You pass create and then a bunch of things, update a bunch of things, retrieve a bunch of things, delete one. So you have a single API. That's one extreme end of the spectrum. Or you go to all the way to the other extreme end and say that hey. An API per table, or 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 even API per column, right? Or or you know, uh, you know, uh, so on and so forth, right? Or per key and so on. But but in 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 retrospect, people actually you know came up with these abstractions, which is create, update, retrieve, and delete, right? Now now, it, while it makes sense that what, when when you look at this uh, years later, you know this is obvious. Like you're like, hey, it has to be crud. It cannot be the other two extremes. But but when when this Concept did not exist. It's super hard to kind of uh, do something like this, right? So yes, so keep the spectrum in mind. And with that, let's move on to the you know the uh, customer audit component design, right? Uh, you know how how can we change it? So with this understanding of naming and and the flaw of not having it too specific or generic, how can we go and update it, right? So uh, so you know now that you know let's come up with better abstraction for uh, the customer audit component, right? So one approach. Is to keep the three subcomponents as is, right? Your three subcomponents, rename them as follows, uh, you know, as I've done in the diagram, right? Just uh, API gateway becomes a customer audit request handle, uh, DynamoDB becomes the audit store, and SNS becomes audit notification, right? So, so here's the thing, right? What I've done is I made the abstraction specific to the problem domain, right? The new abstractions are specific to our problem of customer audit, right? Uh, the abstraction on the left, on the other hand, can fit multiple problem domains, right? For example, I can use the same uh, Design on the left for a different problem domain, like storing, let's say, customer phone numbers, right? So, so, uh, so if I, if I, you know, if I, if I take even just for the customer audit problem, I, I, I showed you three design options, right? And I kind of now put that in the spectrum, which is, uh, you know, uh, over probably right and under, right? Uh, so, so left side is over abstraction, the right side is under abstraction, and the middle is the problem, uh, you know, probably the right abstraction of for the problem domain, probably, right? With this context, let's talk about the next two flaws in crafting abstractions, right? Flaw two is abstractions have no correlation to the problem domain, right? Uh, this results in under or over abstraction, as you've seen, and it may produce a design that may be too generic or too specific, right? The right abstraction depends on the problem domain and how you define the domain, right? So it's super important that you actually define the domain. In this case, for example, this, this is one of the uh, design options of, of customer audit component. Uh, while you see this design is too generic for the problem domain of customer audit, it may very well fit some other problem domain, right? For example, if your if your problem domain is to build a system to define a framework for serverless computing, uh, a system that can, for example, you know, execute some code and source some state, state, this becomes a good pattern there, right? So, so it's super important to understand the problem domain and ensure and define a problem domain and ensure that abstractions have you know, a correlation, right? So the flaw, second flaw is that abstraction don't have a correlation. The third flaw is pretty uh, obvious, right? Flaw three is that abstractions are tightly coupled to technology choices, right? In this case, uh, you're, you're talking about AWS technologies with API gateway, DynamoDB, and SNS. While technology choices are important, you should defer technique, technology solutions to as late as possible in the design cycle, right? When you have multiple technology choices, you're better off designing such that technology choices no longer matter, right? For example, instead of saying you want to use SNS, what you want to say is important to say that, hey, uh, you need to use a distributed messaging solution. That's what you want to do, right? This makes your design independent of technology and simplifies decision making, right? So that's, that's, that, those are the three flaws in crop, you know, uh, that you have to keep uh, in mind when you're crafting abstractions. So let me go to the, 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 the last part of the star, uh, which is I'm going to leave you with three guidelines for you know, checking good abstraction. And the three guidelines, Pretty much flow from uh, the domain uh, from from the flaws that I've spoken about earlier. So the guidelines are: first, is your problem domain defined? Okay, and do your abstraction have a correlation to the problem domain? Right. Second, are the abstractions technology agnostic? 
right? Third, aren't they too specific or too general? These are questions that you want to repeatedly ask yourself when you're testing abstraction uh, uh, for software design, and you will eventually get it right. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you for attending the short talk on uh, uh, you know software design.